Hello, everyone, and welcome to day 10 of the GTC. Uh, this is the suppl supplement that I told you about earlier this week, and in fact, I've told you about every day this week, where we've invited a guest in, Mrs. Carrie Gupton from Meade County High School. She has been wonderful and has agreed to allow us to come take a peeky poo into her Google Classroom. She has one of the best Google Classrooms I've seen, and I've seen quite a few. And the reason why I really like what Carrie does is when you think back over what we've done in the GTC training up till now and how we always start in the drive, creating things in the drive and then pulling those over into our Google Classroom. Now that's the model that she adheres to and I, I think it's the correct one. So I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to allow her to take over and walk you through and she actually has content that she has to get together for the NTI that's going on. So this should be extremely um, helpful for those of you who are still trying to get your heads around what's a Google Classroom and how does it work. I get lots of text messages from people saying, I know how to use Google Docs and slides and sheets. I use them all the time here at UofL. Yeah, it's good, great. Now the party is trying to get it all together to make it seamless within a classroom that, again, kids will use. Ready, Carrie? Absolutely. Let's go. It's all yours. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to get to share my love of technology in my classroom. Um, it's really important to me that we use the, the tools that we're given um, to help empower our students. So um, that's something. In Mid County, we are blessed to be one-to-one -one devices with seventh through twelfth grade. When I first came to Mid County, we had iPads for every student, um, seventh through twelfth grade. But the beginning of last school year, so this is the second full school year that we've done it, we uh, switched to Chromebooks, and we actually distribute our Chromebooks before school starts. Um, if Parents bring their students in, they pay their fees and sign their papers. They get to take them home about a week before school starts. Um, and so we have somewhere around 87% of the student population come to school the first day with their Chromebook. So because of that, I teach my expectations from the get-go, from day one, that they better have their device just like they need a pencil and a piece of paper. So that is something I've worked at all year long. Um, even if we just do bell work in Google Classroom, you need your device every day. And so I think that has made it a little bit of a more seamless transition for my students moving from in the classroom to at home learning through the NTI non-traditional instruction. Um, just because they have learned that everything they need is typically posted in Google Classroom. So that is something um, I think one of the small benefits for my kids. Now, absolutely, my kids and myself, we're ready to be back in the classroom. Um, because it's so much easier. I did not sign up to be an online teacher. If I had, that'd be a different thing. But I'm really missing seeing my kids' faces and having, you know, those inside jokes and all the things that happen when you're in a classroom. However, um, thankfully, because of technology, I do still get to do um, some things. So I would like to share with you some of the things I'm doing for our NTI. So first, I'm going to show you my classes. Um, you can drag and drop these in any order. So I happen to have them in the order first, second, learning lab, third, fourth, sixth that I teach. I also have um, the STLP club in here. We use this for attendance. Um, I put out a Google form every club day so that I know who's here and if they need me for something specifically. Um, and then I also put information like whenever state got canceled this year, I put it as an announcement in that Google Classroom for my kids to know. Um, and then I also have, this is my example um, dummy class that I use to show things. And then um, one of my friends, I'm currently a student in these. So that's something I really like about Google Classroom is that you can be a teacher and a student at the same time for different classes. So these are all my classes. And then um, this is my principal. She uses this to give us all of our information this is a teacher friend. He was playing with Google Meet because that was updated this week. Um, this is from a training last week. This is something that we do at our high school. We have a um, cohort Google Classroom 
for each graduating year. So I teach freshmen, um, therefore I am a quote unquote student in the freshman Google Classroom so that I can see and I can put up on the board things whenever we do like ILP activities because that's how we push our ILP activities. That's how we push home homecoming voting. Um, if we need them, you know, any kind of administrative homeroom things. That's what when I was in school, it was homeroom. Um, but we call it learning lab and we use this Google Classroom. I know that senior Google Classroom is really important because that's where they push out um, scholarship information. They push out graduation information. Um, there's all kinds of things, all that administrative stuff that we used to have to go to homeroom and do all the hard copy paperwork. It's all done through that Google Classroom for their cohort. So I think that's a really, really smart organizational way to do it because we have 1500 kids on our campus. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty large number. I went to a smaller high school, so sometimes I'm intimidated. So that's how this is set up. Um, I'm going to go into my first period here and you can see I utilize my due dates. So my students know, you know, they can come over here to see what's due today. This is the stream. I chose to let them see the um, attachments and details. It's over here in the settings classwork on stream. You can show condensed notifications or hide notifications. I choose to let them see the attachments because sometimes they want to see my master copy to compare if they do some sort of weirdness to their copy. That way they know what they need to fix. So that's something I choose to do. Others don't like it as much. Um, but I have all of our classwork here and I use topics. So a topic is a unit for me. Um, and you can see these are all my snow learning day assignments and um, because that's what originally our NTI packets were called. We call them snow learning days because we only used them for snow learning days. Um, it's a little. There's no more snow, but there's still these learning days going on. So. Oh, whoo. Um, that's why the first 10 days, that's where I posted them because that's kind of what they were. But now that we're past day 10. Um, we have gone back to content, so that's what you see this unit 10 genetics here. Um, this is what we've been working on, and you can actually see these are drafts that I need to post. Um, so you can see this is stuff that I've returned because we were in class. We were in class, so I returned them so that the students had ownership back of their work. But now that we're in NTI world, I do not return any of their work because I have to hold on to their work in case of an audit. So that's why you see these turned in numbers, but I'm not having that extra number like it is down here. Um, as you can see, we've got a Google Sheet, we've got Quizlet links, there's a PDF posted there, and there's YouTube video, there's PDF, and I make copies of this for them. And then this is a Screencastify video that I made. So that is how my biggest way of communicating other than posting in Google Classroom. Pretty much every day I create a Screencastify video um, so that I can explain to my students, say, okay, this is what we're doing today. This is what I need you to see. And I can show you, is it on this day? No, not this day. This day. Okay, so this was a mini project we did. Um, and when I opened this, I knew that without me being there to talk to them, they would look at this and say, nope, and they would walk away. And <laughs> so to remove that frustration, I work really hard and try to figure out ways to remove the frustration before it even comes up. So that way we can keep rolling. So I created a Screencastify video and I'll show you just a few minutes of it and maybe not minutes, more like seconds. Um, and you can see. Good morning, my loves. Can you see me? Oh. Sorry, there you are. Um, I didn't realize I'd flip that, so fun times. I hope you had a glorious weekend. I don't know about you, but last night's storm woke me up several times, so I'm not feeling like 100%. But so I totally try to act like I'm in the classroom and actually talking to them. Um, and I've had several students tell me that they watch my 
videos every day because they miss me and they are so appreciative. I do have two kids of my own and they do make cameos. In fact, the other day when I was recording um, one of my videos, they I ended up having to go into the screencast of my beta editor because I had to edit out so much girl drama from my house. There were squeals, there was all the things. So we had to edit that out so it wouldn't be so distracting. But if we move right along. Hey, Carrie. Yes. A couple of thoughts. Number one, did your district, um, is it basically saying Screencastify, which is for the, those of you out there who don't know, is an extension that you can put into your Chrome browser. It's a really, really nice uh, extension yes. and free. Um, second thing, did your district decide on a, in other words, here in, in JCPS, they're trying to do, use Meet. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're having lots of problems with Meet. Were you all given uh, directions on what you were allowed to use or not allowed to use? Um, anything that we have permission to use, we're allowed to use. I know some teachers have been using Zoom. Um, there are people who have mixed feelings about Zoom because it was built for adults in the business world. Right. Um, I know Google Meets was opened up this past week. They pushed that through Google Classroom, which our um, Google admin had opened Meets for us before we left, but they weren't but it wasn't native in Google Classroom yet. Um, right. So we do have teachers who are using Google Meets. Um, we have some people like me who are using Screencastify because we've used it previously, like for sub plans, um, which by the way, right now you can upgrade to the free, well, you can upgrade for free to the paid version, unlimited I think is what it's called, um, oh, really? because of the NTI yeah. world we're living in. Wasn't the, the thing with the non-paid, was it just a limit of how much time it five would minutes. record? Yeah. So, so yeah, with the free, you can do five minutes, which was absolutely perfect um, for the first 10 days. I didn't really need that much. Yeah. Um, but now that we're into content, like this one, I think is 17 minutes. This is the one I was thinking about that I had right. to edit the other day. And you The can other thing I'll, I'll give you kudos on is thank you very much for the uh, absence of the nose shots. I can't tell you how many meetings, uh, virtual meetings I've been in on at the university and you're literally looking up somebody's nose oh. um, because they, well, maybe they've never used the video camera on their laptop. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what the answer is, but I think something that everyone who is going to use a virtual conference platform needs to understand, we don't want to see up your nose. Yep. Um, and if you're blind like me, fine. You know, you can at least set it up so that when it shoots you, at least it's just shooting your head, not looking up through your nose. Mm -hmm. So I get it. And I'm sorry. I just had to say that because I just really appreciate the quality and the fact that you took the time to think about what you want your kids to see when you're filming. Go ahead. Carry on. All right. So I just wanted to show you that Screencastify allowed me, you can see right here, I had to show them how to insert a drawing um, and how to do that. That's something I would have done in the classroom up on my big screen. And, and so since I wasn't there in the classroom with them beside me, I decided that it was important to use my Screencastify and walk them through step by step how I would do each thing. Um, and again, I acted like I was sitting there in the classroom and used my personality um, to try to make it a little less treasury. So um, this is something that I think has helped. I've had kids tell me they do appreciate it. Um, and if I come up here and you can see like um, I chose to poll them about doing a Google Meet for today or Monday and gave them options of should we meet, when do we meet, um, and gave them four options. One, I can't meet, I don't have internet, or I've got something else going on. The second option was let's meet on Friday during class time. The third option was let's meet on Monday during class time. And then the fourth option was I don't need to meet, I've got this. And so I, as you can see, I didn't see it get everyone to respond, but I had enough that I knew that I was going to meet today and Monday. That way I was there. 
Um, and I just remove, and we can see it over here on the stream, um, I just remove the link so that way, because the Google Meet is supposed to be like only opened if the teacher has it active, but um, my teacher friend and I have noticed that that's not as secure as they wanted it to be. And mm -hmm. so I'm just removing that link when I'm not there. That way they can't open it without me. So let's talk about some of these assignments. Um, this is next Monday's assignment. Um, due to the light speed filter, sometimes kids YouTube quit working randomly. So I have created a template email with the troubleshooting tips of, all right, let's try this, let's try this, let's try this, let's try this. If you ain't got any more, if that hasn't gotten you where you want to be, then you're going to have to find another device and watch it. Sorry. Um, so that's why I put that disclaimer, because when we first started content, I had so many emails. The video won't let me play. The video won't let me play. So now I just put a disclaimer and I can send them that template email. So... This is for next Monday, and I had it as a draft, but it's Friday afternoon. And I, again, I've asked my students, do you like me posting next week's work the, pr the previous Friday? And every kid I've asked has said, yes, I like knowing it's there when I'm ready for it. So I think that's something, um, because taking my master's and my rank one online, I have learned to appreciate the asynchronous ability to do my work when it's best for me. So that's something I've tried to infuse into my NTI learning for my students just to give them more choice in what they're doing. So we've got our title and because we're in NTI world, I label it whatever day number it is and then the title of the lesson. That way it's easy for them to identify, it's easy for them to find, it's easy for me to refer to. It just makes the whole world easy. So that's what we do with our title. And um, the instructions, I like to number them or bullet them. So it's, again, it's easy to understand. And then you can add all kinds of things to add this video. I opened YouTube and I searched right here for Amoeba Sisters Incomplete Dominance and found the one I wanted, added it. And um, this Google Doc was already in my drive. So let's go visit that real fast. So here's my drive. And I actually have it starred so that I can easily get to what I want. A star is kind of like a bookmark so that you can quickly get to where you want to go. Because if I had to follow this tree of folders right here, it takes so much longer and it makes me angry. So, so now when you're in, this is a really good point. When you're in your drive, as you're creating content that you put into the drive, what makes you decide whether something's going to get started or not? Um, if it's something I am, I need often. Right. So I have my science um, PLC folder, which that is our Mee County High School science department folder. Um, and that's, that's what is starred because I teach two different sections. I teach both biology and integrated. So I need to have access to both of those. But then we also use ADI and this is used for all of our sections. Um, I need ACT, TCTs. There's just several things on here that I need to be able to. So instead of so one of my co-teachers, he only teaches integrated science. So he starred this folder instead of the whole science folder because he only wants access to this one quickly. Sure. Right. Um, so you have total control over what you star or don't. Um, but again, I star the things that I need quick access to. And then you can see that we are very, um, this, the bio, the department chair and I both teach biology and she and I think a lot alike about how we organize things. And um, so you can see, like, I numbered this number one. That way it's the easiest to get to. But all of our units down here, they are they start the same. They have the same formula so that it's easy to find the things we want. When you show us these folders and you say you're sharing them with uh, another teacher, mm -hmm. you've done that through the sharing or have you done that through the collaborating? 
Um, so we, we you know I mean? the PLC folders yeah. were created by administrators. Got it. And then within our science folder, then we are, everyone who has editing access can add or delete anything in these files. So that's something we are very, very, we try to be redundant, even though, yep. you know, it's, so even though this is our shared folder, we each pretty much have our own folders as well within our own drives that we save stuff to as well. So that way, if someone deletes something because they were made a mistake, we still can get to it some way. So redundancy, even though we're on technology, we still have redundant copies. And the way we do that, do you know how to do that? No, show us. Okay, so if I want something to reside in two different folders, so say I'm actually, variation of traits is something we're going to need here in just a minute. Um, if I want this to live in this folder, but I also want it to live in my personal folder, you highlight it so that it has the blue, and then you go Shift Z. And so then it will now, I go decide what folder I want it to go in, and I'm going to put it in biology. Genetics. And I'm going to add it here. Okay, it's still in this folder, but it's also in my personal folder as well. Is this a copy or is this a link? It, it is the same thing. Okay, and so it's a copy. Yeah, but it's the actual literal same file. Right. So, so does, if, it, does, it, does it give up its permissions when you do this? No. Okay. So if, so say my chair comes in and she actually accidentally deletes this, it will be gone from this folder, but it's still in my folder. So it's not gone forever. Uh, so that's a pretty big. Yeah, that's, that's a. That's a, that's a lifesaver right there. That, so anyway, here's our folder, and you can see this is our pandemic resources. We kind of, we, we culled through our three units we had left um, and decided what the most important things were so that we could do small lessons and not overwhelm our students, because that has been, that is one of our biggest um, goals is we want to continue learning, but that's not our top priority. And um, so we will, so we have reduced the amount of content, reduced the amount of work we are expecting of our students to make life just a little bit easier. Um, so that way the kids who can or want to work, they absolutely can. Um, they still have that opportunity, but we're not overwhelming them. So looking here and you can see there's PDFs and slides and docs. There's all kinds of things in here. These are actually PDFs from Amoeba Sisters. They're free on their website, so I just download them and then add them to our drive. Um, this comes from Read, ReadWorks. This is another excellent free resource. Um, has all kinds of nonfiction reading at all different abilities. And so this is something I'm going to actually use here in just a minute, like I told you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the Assign button for this one that I had pulled up because it is Friday afternoon. We've got my topic, I've got my due date, and I am making my due date a week after when they're supposed to do it. So this is the assignment for next Monday. Um, so it's so next Monday's the 20th, so it's due on the 27th. That way they've got time to work on it. So I'll hit assign, and you can see I've actually got all three classes, all three biologies are going to do this on Monday. Am I sure? Absolutely. Okay, so that's how I do that. But now let me go through and actually show you if it decides to post. Sometimes Google thinks a little too hard and you just have to hit the refresh button. Oh, I know. I've had, I can't tell you how many people have, have just almost had a panic attack when you go to do the initial creation of a classroom. 
And they're like, it's not doing anything. <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes it takes it a second or two. Just let All it. All right, be. so you, you took it and put it there. Yes. So now, yeah. and you can see the difference. You can see this is bold and mm -hmm. we've got the color here. So this is live. My students can now see this. This, however, is a draft um, because I haven't posted it for them yet because right. I made these yesterday, but I didn't want to post them yet. Um, so now I'm just going to edit and I'm ready to assign. So I'm going to assign it real fast. Um, this is also something I would do in my classroom. I would set up things, drafts of things that I want to post for the week ahead, um, but then not actually hit the post button, the assign button until that day, um, just as a way to make my life easier because that's something you can work on ahead of time. You can front load. Uh, that is one of my words is front loading. So I'm going to show, go ahead real fast, go these two more so that I can create a new one for you all. Like I said, sometimes we just gotta, we gotta think a little extra. <laughs> so we need to wait. I was, I was talking about, this, this morning when we were recording at 10, and I was talking about the, which exactly what you're doing. And I said, think about it. So if you are the kind of person who likes to plan ahead, you can put all this in the place and let it sit there. It's not going anywhere. It's a draft. Mm -hmm. And, you know, draft doesn't mean that it's un, not a finished. Draft just means it's waiting for you to assign it. Absolutely. So you can have it all perfect but you haven't assigned it yet. So therefore it sits as a draft and nobody sees it except you as a draft. Absolutely. And now you have the, the best of both worlds. You can go in and you can say, okay, we're at the point now in our teaching that I'm ready to move to the next part of this unit. Boom. There it is. And so you can actually see this. Um, so I started creating this assignment thinking it was going to fit the sequence for last week. And then I actually, paid attention to what I was doing and I was like, wait a minute, this, mm -hmm. uh, this isn't genetics, this is evolution. And so I figured out, um, and you can see right here, this is my planner um, for days 21 through 30. I figured out that in the sequence that'll need to be done on day 30. So instead of just deleting my work, I fixed the name and saved it as a draft. And it's just sitting there waiting for me until yeah. I'm, Sit in your waiting until you're ready to put it. Go back to that planner, please. Okay, who created this? Is this from the district or is this Carrie's? Okay, so let me open another tab. I'm going to show you. Our district created a Google site. Actually, that's my MC. That's my SCLP website. Sorry. Um, hmm. there we go. Here, so this is a district site. This was our NTI portal, um, and this is the high school. And then it, at the top, it has, you know, this is when each day is supposed to be done. And then we've got linked to days 11 through 20 and linked to the days 21 through 30. So, and the way we chose to do it, because our high school is so big, we have so many teachers, so many different classes. It's listed by department and then teacher. So this was all created from the board. Okay. And um, so I did not create this file it was made for me and then shared with me and the original file looked like i don't even want to imagine what it looks like a different format that made my head hurt and i said nope yep. yep so you can see and i cannot understand if a teacher had a bunch of different sections that they were teaching how they would need first second learning yep. lab third fourth fifth sixth like i get it why they did it because they had to make one file for yeah. you know a hundred teachers i get it but i looked at it and i said no that makes my head hurt um and so instead and this is actually the second file the first file was days 11 through 20 and i looked at it and i said nope um so i <laughs> i remade it the way i wanted it to so i still kept this pertinent information I did not have my Google Classroom codes posted because I don't think that's safe. I think that's a safety issue. 
um, and that's why I put this here. I have had one new student transfer in and bless their heart. Can you imagine moving in the middle of this and having to enroll in a new no. school? No. Um, so I emailed the parent and said, hey, welcome to our class. You know, I, here are the Google Classroom codes for me. Um, all assignments are posted there. Let me know if you've got any question. And it was bigger and more than that. But, you know, that's just a... It's a safety concern for me to post Google Classroom code, so I didn't. Right. I agree. I mean, you know, we, we everybody makes such a big deal about security, security. And then on that original document you showed me, I was I didn't really notice it until I really took a good look at it. And I saw where it had the Google codes insert here. And I thought, you're giving away the codes to your classrooms? Mm -hmm. um, no. <laughs> and I guess, I guess. And I get if you were going, if it was a new thing, if you weren't using Google Classroom before this and you needed kids to, sh to like, I, I kind of get it, except for the fact that when you create a Google Classroom, you can add students and it sends them emails to join. So yeah. I just, they didn't ask me, so. Yeah. And I hope, I hope on the back end, on their end, on the Google admin side, that what happens is, so I'm a herky jerky guy and I see this little cute thing that says Google code. And then if I try to get in, it's going to stop me at the door because I don't have a Gmail account that's registered within the district. I uh, absolutely hope so. So yeah. okay. I, I made mine into columns like this um, because it makes sense in my head and yeah. I, and I color coded it. You know, I've got it set up like this. Um, this middle column is for units, like whenever I change the unit. And I actually want to show you this as well. This is posted in my Google Classroom, but it's also here. Um, I use CK12 um, to create my own textbooks. So I created these PDF textbooks of the content I needed my kids to know. And so you can see there are 10 things within evolution. These are the things because I do have kids that don't have internet. And so my conversation with them was, okay, I'm gonna keep posting the things in Google Classroom, but here's what I want you to do. When you go to town to get groceries, go by a hotspot, download this PDF to your Chromebook. Then read the sections, answer the questions in your notebook, take pictures, and then when you come back to town, email me pictures of your work, and that will count for the assignments I posted in Classroom. It's not fun. You know, but it is low tech and it is a way for you to continue your learning. And so that's something. Um, and see, CK12, like it's amazing because you have all the content here. There are um, links if they want to or can go elsewhere. But then there's these review questions right here. And like I said, it's not fun, it's not exciting, it's not flashy, but it's accessible. So that's an option. Now, all, the, all the kids' Chromebooks have the uh, apps downloaded to them, right? They don't have to be connected to use the Google Docs and all that. Correct. And that's something I did um, back in November. I created videos for how to access Google um, offline and how to access Google Classroom on your personal device. And those are videos our district pushed out on our one snow day back in February. And then they pushed out again um, on back whenever we were starting this NTI um, just to help make parents aware of things that we can do. And I use screen. I use Screencastify for one of them. And I use the screen recorder on my iPhone for the other. I learned how to do the screen recorder on my iPhone. I was so excited. So anyway, this is my planner for lack of a better word and this is found on that district NTI um, and actually what happened is starred so if we go back here to my starred and I heard a door so my six-year-old is probably awake now um, here's the this is my work in progress so I made a copy of the first file that was shared with me and then I've got my days um, if it will scroll, are we loaded? Oh, we're almost there. I've got, I had all my days on here. I just kept adding. You can see it's turned white down here where I had other stuff added. 
um, because this was my work in progress. But then I saw that they were making a new file for each set of 10 days. And so I just copied and pasted my work from this work in progress to each new file. So that way I can continue working on my plans over here. Um, and this is the public file that is live for my students and parents to see. Um, this is my daughter's kindergarten. So this is a different um, file. All the kindergarten teachers got together and they said, here's what we need you to do for these days. You know, these are required. These are optional. And so now they've got a matrix option down here um, for them to see what they could do. So that's just for our elementary friends. They can see a different perspective. Right. And then we were talking about STARD earlier. Our district, our high school, actually, and each building has their own chunk calendar. And it's a piece of information. That way we kind of know what's going on. We know when field trips are without 10 million emails. Let's, um, let's, let's, let's talk a little, because one of the things that I mentioned in uh, the training, and mm -hmm. I evoked your name, was the, how, how hard it is to get kids in the Google Classroom to pay attention to calendar. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you, you know, give me some more insight into that? Um, I think it's just a, it's something that they have, it's a skill, you know, coming up yeah. with how to manage their time. Time management is a skill. And I think it's something that we all struggle with until we are forced to learn it. And that's something I talked with my sister, who's a junior at Western right now. Uh, she's at home now online, but um, she's a student at Western and she's an RA on campus. And I asked her, you know, what's one of the biggest skills that you see kids come in lacking that they need? And she said, um, time management was a big deal. And so that's actually something I'm not sure where I bet I've got it somewhere in my. We know I sent, um, I started, uh, sending out stuff to the Google forum. Cause I thought, mm -hmm. you know, all right, I've played with this enough. I've seen it enough. And I said to them, I said, okay, I understand why classwork or cl under the classwork tab where you have calendar and drive. I understand why those two links are there. Mm -hmm. But I really think you need to think about those two being put on that first screen, which of course is the stream. It because that's where everybody lands. And if you're doing it right in your stream, then your assignments are there and everything's there. Mm -hmm. But then the part about calendar and of course uh, the pushback I got from them was, well, if you put assignments into the calendar, they show up in the stream. Okay, fair enough. But I also think that it just needs to be in front of their face mm -hmm. at all times. Just needs to be there to say, look, if you're gonna keep up with what's going on, here's the link to the calendar and you'll see what's going on in here. Now, what is this you got? Looks like a template. Okay, so um, back in the fall, we, another teacher and I, we presented at one of our district PD days yeah. about our learning lab data notebook. And because we teach freshmen, she and I teach freshmen, and we, we work really hard on all kinds of learning strategies, especially at the beginning of the year. We look at different tech tools and how we can make them work for us and make our lives easier. So this was what we added. Um, we shared with our staff. You know, these learning lab expectations came from our principal and um, she and I came up with this choice board of what you should be doing during learning lab. And um, if we don't have an assigned like ILP activity or some sort of voting or whatever administrative task that we get, we do through learning lab, usually on Mondays. Um, but then we as part of an because we both have an elementary background um, we created this daily task data notebook for kids to track how are you spending your time um, and had notebooks that lived in our classrooms and we gave them this weekly goals and things to do we showed them how to use google keep and here's a picture of my desktop keep whereas this is her phone keep and we have videos on there 
And then we also, after talking with my sister, I thought it would be a good idea. Okay, kids, let's look at how you structure your week at a glance. Because this is something my sister does. Of course, it looks a little different because her classes are, you know, sporadic throughout the day. So she can add time to shower between classes or do homework or whatever. That's not really something that can happen as a high schooler. But I wanted them to think about when do you do what? Um, and so we gave the, there's a video, there's videos over here um, to show students how to create your schedule, how to think about adding things into your day. Um, but then I also showed kids Google Calendar. How do we, and does that one open? Yeah. And um, how do we manage our calendar? And if you don't want to use Google Calendar, that is absolutely fine. Let's pull up the native calendar in your cellular device and create stuff with that. And so that, and again, that's something I model throughout the school year. When I need my kids to remember something, I'll be, I'll tell them, get out your phones, make an event in your calendar right now. This is what we need to do. Make yourself, you know, have a reminder the day before. Just modeling. I don't expect them to remember. I model for them and I remind them so that there's no frustration there. We're coming up on to an hour here, mm -hmm. and um, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I heard a little voice in the background there at one time. So give me give me a sense here. So go, go let's go back to your drive, because okay. that's where I always try to get everybody to think. When you're sitting down and starting to plan, is this where you start? Um, I usually, yes, I, I usually have an idea of my, what I want, um, half, you can have half. Just hold on, I'll help you, okay? Sorry, guys. It's snack time in the Gupton house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep waiting for somebody to come through my door, too. Yes, so we, um... This is an example of a document that I had to, and you can see I changed the name to NTI. And um, no. this was a worksheet that we used in class, but I, something I have taught my kids, you put answers in the boxes right here. I just insert a one cell table and then change the color of the font that way. Really? So you're not using forms? No, like I do use forms um, and that was something I was going to show you with the thing for Friday, the assignment mm -hmm. I need to post for Friday, I have, I want them to read that article and then there's comprehension questions. I will put those comprehension questions into a Google form because those right. are multiple choice type thing. But this, that got to work. And so I, it's not a hyperdoc, um, but it is, okay, here's the, Here's the information. Here's some more information. Now here's the question. Answer the question. Here's your question. Answer it. And then, but I had to go through and insert these table cells. I had to create this table. I created this table right here. I had to rewrite the directions so that it was more understandable without me sitting there explaining it to them. So this took me. And you can see this is extra. And I even added, because I do, I have kids. Is there more work we can do? And sometimes I'm like, children, please, please just go outside and play. Quit staring at a screen. Um, but I do add extra sometimes just because I do know kids need it. So I worked yesterday and I made this document so much more user friendly. That way they just have to put their answers in instead of trying to figure out and getting frustrated. So in other words, having to build their own Punnett squares and all of that. Kind absolutely. Of stuff. Could they do it? Sure. But again, I'm all about removing that level of frustration if possible. And now when, when I put my answer in this box mm -hmm. uh, and, and I save the document and share it back to you, I mean, where do I go with this? So I created this document yesterday uh -huh. and then over here um, in my classwork page, this is in Oh, I lost you. Carrie, we lost her. Well, I'm going to... Come on. There you go. She's back. You you left us there, Carrie. Oh, 
Okay. If I don't get her back here soon, I'll go ahead and close it down. Yeah, see, it says Carrie left the session. So she's probably going to try to come back in. So let's just give it a second. I hope this wasn't too overwhelming. Um, she is an incredible uh, technologist who really understands the power of the Google Classroom. And I hope what you're seeing here is that what she's done is she's taken all the information and all the skills, the basic skills that we have been going over these last 10 days, and then she builds upon that. And the thing that I really like is how she creates things and she doesn't assign them. She lets them just sit there waiting for the moment to when she can assign one, because that way she has control over what all um, the kids see when they see it. So they're not overwhelmed with 14 different assignments. And then it's like, where do I start? Good, good practice. I'm going to go ahead and, and shut us down. Um, and again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, 502-457-2937. And please, please, if you can, let us know how you did on your uh, Google exam. Really would like to know. There is a, and let's see, can I get the control back? Yep. There is a survey down here at the, at the end on the first page when you land, okay? So on the page where it says Google Teacher Certification Level 1, at the very bottom, there is a Google Survey feedback form. If you would please give us your honest opinion about all of this stuff, uh, it's the only way I can make it better. And it's not long. I mean, look, it's just <laughs> fairly short. But that way I can uh, do this better. I've enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And if you need to come back and form a little group and do this again, I'm open to that. Just let me know. Thank all of you for taking the time for being a part of the Google Teacher Certification Level 1.